Welcome to Smoky Goodness. On a very hot, humid, windy day. I hope uh, the wind doesn't interfere with my uh, video here this afternoon, but it could. It's been really windy. We're the start of the barbecue and grilling season here in the Northern Hemisphere. Of course, uh, the barbecue and grilling season lasts all year long, but I figured I'd start everybody off with uh, you know, some steaks. Very easy. Gonna... Here comes the wind. I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube. Well, there's a handful of videos of, of uh, reverse serving on YouTube. I look at them and I, I don't want to criticize anybody else's technique or procedure in uh, reverse searing, but uh, just a lot of them I see uh, one or two things that I think I would do differently. So today I'm going to do it. Reverse seared steaks right here on Smoky Goodness. It's going to be great. You're going to love them, I hope. Stick around, Herb. Oh yeah, smoky goodness, the noisiest place on earth to do a barbecue cooking show. I swear to God, my neighbors are loud. Oh well, it's 85, 86, maybe 87 degrees out here. First really nice day of the spring, so yeah, everybody's out, so no problem. Here's what we need, or like I correct myself on all the time, here's what I'll be using. First, I have a big old black iron pan with some coconut oil back there. I'll show you a little bit later what I'm gonna be using that for. All right. Over here, the star of our show. Look at those. Those are two, probably inch and a half thick steaks. Those are bone-in ribeyes. And of course, on top of that, we have a boneless ribeye. The bone-in ribeyes are what I'm going to be reverse searing. And uh, they've already been hit with some uh, gourmet sea salt about an hour and a half ago. Brought these guys up to room temperature so that everything is uh, going to go really smoothly out here. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Over here, this is really important. I've got three thermometers. I have an oven thermometer. Uh, we're going to start these steaks off low and slow. We want this. Uh, we want the grill about 225 to 250, and no more. We're actually going to low and slow the steaks for about half an hour, maybe 15 minutes on each side. And then the third uh, steak, I'm probably just going to do the old-fashioned way. Also got a candy thermometer for a dome temperature. Not really accurate, but gives you a general idea and something I may or may not use. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't even think about using a instant read thermometer for steaks, but I think in this case, I might make an exception. And to top it all off back there, I have, yes, you see correctly, I have hickory chips. Since, uh, since we're low and slowing this, hey, I might uh, be able to put a few, and not very many, just a few hickory chips on there, give them a really light smoke. So, with all that being said, let's get started. The vents are closed almost all the way. We're gonna start these guys. Woohoo! If I don't drop it. In a convective manner, we start. Lay them on the indirect side, just like that. Just like that. Oh yeah. Move this guy over a little bit. Okay. And on goes the lid, and down go the vents. Choosing a candy thermometer on steaks, unbelievable. Like I said, about 15 minutes on each side. This is gonna be good. You guess where I bought these monster steaks? Mm -hmm. Great place, my favorite butcher here in, the, uh, in this area. Great place. Okay, about 15 minutes has gone by. Slowly and nicely. Alright. Just gonna flip them over as if we were making. Oh man, those are tender. Tender ribs. Ribs? That's really what I'm thinking. Alright, for grins and giggles. Is at this point. I'm going to add just a tiny. If you hear me, I'm going to add just a tiny. Buy a new one. All right. See you in another 15 minutes. Man, that hickory smells good. 
these are gonna be some killer, killer steaks. Really good. Man, I hate this wind. All right, here we go, another 15, maybe 20 minutes has gone by or thereabouts. Playing it by ear. Look at that. I've added some lump charcoal over here. Uh, the reason being is we want this screaming hot over on the correct side. We're going to sear these guys, but before we do, trusty black iron pan. This guy isn't even working, so off you go. That's where the coconut oil comes in. Smoke gets in the camera. Pour a little bit of coconut oil in here. Nice and hot. Starting to cool. There. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a steak dance here. I don't really have a lot of room, but I'm going to give it a try. Just really heat it up real nice. Move that off a little bit because I've got this third steak to go. Do this the traditional way. I'm just going to sear that bad boy. A couple of minutes on each side. And. I saw no one else do. I'm going to give it an oil bath. So lay these in here. I'm get them on the oil. Instead of oiling the grates, I want to oil the steak. And then, oh, listen to that. Get that off. We're going to sear that. Wow, I'm sorry. Let this go about two minutes per side. And I'm going to move this one off. Let it cook the traditional way, like I mentioned. And we just repeat the process. We have a quick bath in this hot oil, just like that. Reverse seared steak on the bottom, normal steak on the top. This has a crust that you would not believe. As a matter of fact, 
As my friend Rick over at the Vittle Vlog says, let's see what we think. Mm, mm. Oh, that's good. There is a ton of flavor in there. You're going to love this. You guys got to try this. All right, we're going to eat. Levi wants to say, Stick around, Herb.